The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs in New York City and the Hamptons. And we are coming to you from the LTV studio in Wayne Scott. I have really special guests. We're about to have the Hamptons International Film Festival that will run October 4th through the 8th. And we have the artistic director, David Nugent, and Anne Chasen. Did I say it correctly? Yes. Anne Chasen, the director, the executive director of yes. the Hampton International Film Festival, which is running October 4th through the 8th. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks wow. For having us. Thank you. Wow. We, we're all looking forward to it. 26 years, and in, in, it's extraordinary what's happened with the film festival now. Now, I, what I want to show everyone really quickly sure. are some pictures from last year's festival, mm -hmm. and David, you're going to enlighten us about. Each picture, can you do that? Yeah, I will do the best I can. <laughs> okay, here we go. Can we have the pictures? Oh, here we go. Oh, well, there's a nice picture of Annette Benning, who came as part of our Conversation With program, which we've been doing since year one, when um, Steven Spielberg interviewed Martin Scorsese as a surprise Conversation With. And we had a great lineup of people from that last year. Uh, there's Patrick Stewart, who also participated in it as well. Uh, along with Julie Andrews, who was a Special Lifetime Achievement Award recipient last year. We have a couple of great conversations with her doing this year. There's Army Hammer. Wait, stop just one second. So we have, you, you have a couple of, take the picture down just for a second. Uh, we, you, cause you, oh, I was just going to say, you know, uh, this year we're doing three conversations with as well. Anne, do you want to talk a little bit about those? Well, are we going to talk about that now? Yeah. No, let, we'll come back to the conversation. Okay. Yeah, just stick to this sure. and then we'll get to our this okay. year. Yeah. Yeah, we want, we want you guys to learn everything about what's going on so you sure. can get your tickets and participate. So we may go back and forth a little bit. Here okay. we go. Oh, yeah, so that's Army Hammer, who came last year, along with Timothy Chalamet, to our festival with a film called Call Me By Your Name. Oh, terrific film. Yeah, there's Jennifer Garner, who was also at our festival uh, last year with the world premiere of one of her films. And that is a, a bunch of the uh, up-and-coming actors that we highlight each year. We've been doing for maybe 18 years or so. So I see David Diggs on the left and Timothy Chalamet and Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out and Kumail Nanjiani and, and uh, Danielle McCarthy uh, and Grace Van Patten and Hong Chow. Uh, so uh, we had a great group of actors that came out, and we have three great ones coming out this year as well. And there is also Daniel Kaluuya uh, on the left and Jordan Peele, the writer-director of the film Get Out, on the right. And I Allison love Williams that in the middle. film. Yeah, oh, my God. Me too. So we did a special program with them in that film last year, which was a lot of fun. And there's Margot Robbie, who came for the U.S. premiere of her film I, Tanya last year uh, before the film went on to be nominated for a number of Academy Awards and win some as well. So she came as, as well as Sebastian Stan and the writer-director and a number of the other actors. So that's just a whole uh, big group for whole closing big group. night. Yep. Yeah. So that was a real big coup. And, and here we have Alec and... Yes, this is uh, Alec Baldwin, our co-chairman, and Dick Cavett. We inaugurated an award last year called the Dick Cavett Artistic okay, You could take that picture Champion. down. It's great. Artistic Champion Award. Yeah. So last year you were inaugurated? We inaugurated this uh, award in Dick Cavett's name um, called the Artistic Champion Award. And the reason it was named that is that we wanted to be able to highlight certain people who, who are extremely important in the arts, but mm -hmm. also are somehow communicating about the arts and spreading the arts into other genres, other disciplines. Mm -hmm. So Dick Cavett, obviously, who had a television yes, show, yes. such as yours. <laughs> <laughs> and he was you know, instrumental in getting a lot of people, very famous people, but it's not so famous people, out into the world to the, to the, for the greater good of the arts in general. So this year, that wonderful distinction is going to Alan Alda. Oh, wow. And yes. he's got a really cool podcast right now, I hear. I know, I know. He's so diverse. Yes, yes. His interests are so wide, and he's done so much in science, as many people may know. There's even a building named after him at Stony Brook. Um, he's very, I didn't know that. There is, mm -hmm. there is. Um, I, trying to think if I can remember the... It's a title that's about that long, but it truly What's is about building? learning science through the arts, 
which is great. He had a scientific frontiers science show there, there, that there, ran there, for there, a long time as there's well. There's something about his podcast. Do you guys know what that is? I haven't listened to yeah, it Yeah, yet. no, I know. The, what it, do you know what it's called? It's, the name, It's no. really interesting, and I can't, it's not coming to me, but it, and it had something to do with science about investigating and looking at things in a different kind of way. That's right. It was really very fascinating. Yeah. I only heard about it once, and uh, yeah. I saw him talking about it. But I mean, not only as an to. actor or a writer or a director, I mean, he, he's, his interests are so varied, and he truly gets behind all of the things that he loves the most, but it's true, it's done through art. Right. Meaning those interests combine arts. With now, now, who sciences. do you have for the conversations with this year? We have three very exciting people. <laughs> <laughs> we have Maggie Gyllenhaal. Oh, I love her. Maggie, who is the star of our opening night film, The Kindergarten Teacher. So we'll be uh, doing a conversation with her. Alec, actually, we'll be doing a conversation oh, cool. with her on Friday. He does that so At Bay Street, yes. Then he's also going to do a conversation with Emilio Estevez because he is in a movie that Emilio directed and stars in. Do you know what that is? Yes, it's called The Public. That day, That's on Saturday Yep. at Bay Street as well. And then we're doing a conversation with Damien Chazelle. The, you tell them about Damien. Uh, the youngest uh, director. Yeah, he's the youngest director to ever win Best Director at the Oscars. Uh, he made Whiplash a couple of years ago, and then he made La La Land two oh, years ago. Oh, I do know. For, so yeah. he's yes. here. We'll Duh. have the screening of his film, next film, First Man. First Man. About What's it about? David. It's about the first man to land on the moon, Neil Armstrong, played in this case by Ryan Gosling. And uh, it's his follow it's Damien Chazelle's, Chazelle's follow up to La La Land. It's wonderful. Well, it couldn't be any more different, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday. That's on Saturday. Correct. And and, and and if people want to get the, the schedule, it's where 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 is this office now for the film festival? S well, there's multiple ways you can do it. The schedule is also on our website, mm -hmm. hamptonsfilmfest.org. Hamptons Film Fest. That's Hamptons with an S. That's right. Film Fest. Dot org. Dot org. You can find out everything about the film festival. Yes. All, everything that we're talking about, if you hear something and whatever, mm -hmm. go go check it out there. But they also, if they want to get tickets in person, isn't there a... There is. There is. So uh, the East Hampton Star, David, if you want to hold this up, the East Hampton Star wonderfully prints this amazing book for us and uh, gets it out to anyone who has subscriptions. They have them at their offices. Mm -hmm. And then we have a box office on Main Street in East Hampton, the ob Obligato. Did you have this poster up on the screen? Did you put the poster up? Was that? Hello, guys. Yeah, they put the poster up in the back. Now, here's, oh, wonderful. Isn't, it's beautiful. Who did this poster? Well, Because every is, year you have a new. Yeah, this is a long tradition. Since the yes. very first year, we uh, select an artist that has local ties. Most of them have homes here. If, if not, they come out here quite a lot. And we've had everyone from Eric Fischel and Cindy Sherman and Julian Schnabel and uh, April Julian Cornick. Schnabel did two posters, didn't he? I think he did Julian one. Did one. Did, he did one. Eric, Eric has, has done, done four. Yeah. Yes, but you know, Dan Rizzi, I'm gonna forget, there's so many, David Sally, it goes on and on. And this year's poster uh, was done by Patton Miller. It's, I love the colors. Yes. They're, 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 yeah, they're, they're so beautiful. Of this, well, I was area. so surprised we had never had a poster that had a boat on it. We've done so many landscapes and beach scenes and all mm. these different things depicting the area, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, we hadn't mm -hmm. had a boat on the water. And so when he and I were looking through his, his work, I immediately gravitated to that image, um, additionally because it has that uh, beam of light coming out that sort of looks like projection. Mm -hmm. So... We were thrilled that he was uh, willing to let us use it. And, and you have different categories of films like Conflict and Res Resolution, and there's a signature film where you, I, I know you have this film, Views from Long Island, is it? Yes, yes. So uh, well, David should talk a little bit about uh, our you know, opening and closing in our centerpiece films. And okay. uh, we have something, a spotlight section, which he can go through some of those movies. But we also do things that are signature programs and signature um, <clears throat> series to the Hamptons Film Festival, which makes us different than other film festivals anywhere. And some of those things are we do a section called Views from Long Island, which is supported by the Suffolk County Film Commission. So the signature, the signature series is about Long Island? Well, this particular one, yes. So every year it's about something different? Is that, is that what you do? No, no. We, we have four confused. signature programs that have names that oh, we do every year. Okay. But it's, it's uh, special to the Hamptons Film Festival, meaning if you went to another film festival in the world, they wouldn't have something called 
views from Long Island. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or potentially air, land, and sea. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, a named program. So it allows certain people to see films that interest them the most. For example, many people are incredibly inclined to um, support animal types of, of events. <laughs> yes. So we have a section in the festival called Compassion, Justice, Animal Rights, which is in its fourth year, I believe, um, supported by a wonderful woman, uh, Zelda Penzel, who's out here, who has been giving an award to a film, uh, what was the name of the award? Uh, giving Voice to the Voiceless. And so she decided, you know, I'd like to make this into a, a bigger section. There's so many people who love animals out here. And so we continue to give the award, but we highlight films specifically that are uh, right. about animals. So, David, tell them about one or two of those. Uh, yeah, one of the highlights in the festival this year in that section is called The Cat Rescuers, which really digs into the, I think, nearly one million cats uh, that live on the streets in New York and a group of people that, that spend a lot of their time trying to sort of save these cats, get them spayed and neutered, get them into a house and get them off the street. So that's one of the films we really uh, love in that section this year. Yeah. And Views from Long Island, again, is supported by the Suffolk County Film Commission. That's and so cool. those films are by, for, or about people who are in Long Island. And the award, there's a cash award that goes along with that, uh, goes to a film, or actually you have to be in the section if you film 50% of your principal, ph photography. principal photography has to be shot in Suffolk County. Okay. So mm -hmm. it varies from year to year based on how many films are being made in mm -hmm. the county, but there are some really exciting ones this year, especially The Last Race. Talk about The Last yeah, Race. Yeah, we have a great film called The Last Race by Michael Dweck, who many people know as a celebrated photographer yeah. of the community out here. Uh, and he made a film about one of the last um, raceways that's still out here. Long ago in Long Island, it was filled with uh, race car tracks. Now there's really only one left, and it's in Riverhead. And so he went to document that racetrack and the, the aging couple that basically takes care of it and who's offered many millions of dollars for the land to do something else on it, but they want to hold on to it and they keep it a They own it besides raceway. take care of it. Yeah, and so yes. uh, it's a great film. It's called The Last Race. Oh, it sounds fabulous. Yeah. I know, and we're showing that. I, we, we do want to add, we're showing films in West Hampton this year as well, and that film will be in West Hampton. So you, we, we're, we're now we're in East Hampton, South Hampton, and West Hampton? And Sag Harbor. Oh, and Sag Harbor, too. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Where they own oh, Bay Street, of course, yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and then um, you're showing five world premieres. Is that correct? That That's does true. sound about right. Uh, yes. So, do you, do you remember what those films are? That's a good question. Do I remember? Um, <laughs> I don't remember all of Well, okay. I know we're doing a great one called Henri Doman, which is about a celebrated photographer named Henri Doman uh -huh. who escaped um, Paris or France as a young man and came to America and made a great career as a photographer. And it's about him kind of looking back on his life and then going to France and retracing the steps of some of the places through which he escaped. We're doing the world premiere of a great film called The Panama Papers, which is about the big document dump that happened uh, a couple of years ago and about all of the world leaders and other people that were sort of taken down by a number of the documents that were exposed. It's directed by Alex Winter, and we have Don Lemon coming to moderate a discussion about that from CNN on Saturday night, which we're very excited about. And tell them who Alex Winter is. <laughs> Alex Winter is the director of this film. He's a successful documentary director now, but he was also either Bill or Ted from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, oh, not the Keanu an Reeves one. He's an actor, days. and he was in The Lost Boys and a lot of stuff, and now he's kind of transitioned into being a filmmaker. Uh, and we do have a couple of other world premieres, um, but off the top of my head, I can't remember. I, what you the can't other. remember them all. How, yeah. I'm just curious, mm -hmm. how many films altogether are showing? Do you, do you have a rough estimate? About 125 or so, about 70 features and, and 55 shorts. And, and I'm, uh, 75 features? 70 mm -hmm. features and around 55 shorts. And, and I'm curious, how many films did you have view to narrow it down to this? Well, we get a few thousand sent to us um, through our open submission plan, uh -huh. and then uh, Anne and I and a, a programming team that I work with also go to a number of festivals and look at other films. So we probably went through about 3,000 or so. Uh, it's an extraordinary accomplishment films. that you yeah. people put together every year. And I mean, Thank you've been you. doing it now for eight years, or well, 12, this, 12 years. This will be my 12th years. edition at, at the festival. And, yep. and you're, the, you're the director for five years now. So it's my sixth year. Sixth year. I know. You're I getting, we're all it. getting old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Yeah. No, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> no, I'm no. Just, I'm just, <laughs> I, I don't notice it at all. Speak yeah. for yourself. I, I, I don't <laughs> notice it at all when I look at you guys, okay? What other films do you want to... We have the spotlight films, which the public loves, but mm -hmm. they're, 
they're all going to be easy to be seen. So which films would you like to talk well, I mean, about? I well, not all of them, yeah, actually. Not Think all of the spotlight it. films ultimately will be easy to be seen. You know, some of the films in our festival will get a wide release. Some in the Hamptons, but certainly not all. Many of them in New York City, but certainly not all of them. So that's well, to one me, of the it's things. Wife release if it's in New York. I'm yeah. glad that, uh, <laughs> I mean, but that's one of the great things about a festival is it allows you to see films yes. that you wouldn't otherwise get a chance to see. I will say a couple of um, films did not get into the catalog. Some people really use the catalog to organize their yeah. schedule. Um, and yeah. a couple of films came in just after the deadline Definitely of when we had to go this print. Those. So there's a great one called Never Look Away by Florian Henkel von Donnersmark, who's an Academy Award winner. He made a film called The Lives. Say that again. That's I, <laughs> Can you do that again? Yeah. <laughs> Florian Henkel von Donnersmark. Whoa. Thank you. Yeah, He's good. a German filmmaker who made a film called The Lives of Others, which won the Academy Award for Foreign Language Film about eight or nine years ago. This is his new film, which is about German art scene uh, around World War II and um, Gerhard Richter and Joseph Boys. We're doing one screening of that on Monday called Never mm. Look Away, which I'm excited about. We also just added a film. We added Steve McQueen's follow-up to 12 Years a Slave called Widows. And then we also added a great film called Biggest Little Farm, which is one of the best films I saw on the Toronto Film Festival this year about a couple, a young couple who just decides to quit their regular jobs and to start a farm on their own. And it is so sweet and charming and moving and dramatic. And it's a true story? Oh, it's a true mm -hmm. story. It's a, a documentary filmed over the course of eight years or so. And oh, it wow. is incredible. It's called Biggest Biggest Little Farm, so we really hope people come check that out. Yeah, I can't wait to see that one. I didn't yeah. get to see it yet. And yeah. uh, the closing night, you have a really interesting closing night film. Yeah. Uh, I forgot that. It's Lost called Boy, Boy Erased. Boy Erased. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's Beautiful Boy, there's Boy, Boy. Erased. <laughs> it gets a little complicated this year, but yeah, Boy Erased uh, is... Let's talk about that sure. a little bit, because I think it's a, it's a subject matter that's very provocative mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. and it's something that people, a lot of people are pushing for, in a, mm -hmm. which I think is so out. You mean Boy Erased and the subject of that film? Yes. Yeah, the subject of that film is uh, a young boy who's feeling that he is uh, is gay, and his parents, one of whom, his father, played by Russell Crowe, is a pastor, and sends his son to gay conversion camp. His son is played by Lucas Hedges, the Academy Award nominee. Yeah, and his nominee. mother is Nicole Kidman. And his mother is yes. played by Nicole Kidman. And uh, he is sent to gay conversion camp, which I didn't know much about. But um, I think to date, hundreds of thousands of young Americans had been sent to gay conversion camps. Uh, and it really explores his journey. And it's a really beautifully... Very right, it's well a true yeah, story. It's, it's based on a book. I, 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 you know, we had uh, uh, Confessions of a Mormon Boy. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't. Stephen Fales is his name, mm -hmm. and he came on the show, and he's written a show about that, and he, he was actually forced to go through this kind of convert. I, this is a whole new thing to me that people actually have had that experience. Had, had that experience. At all. So I think you know, I, I saw the trailer for that. And I thought, oh, this looks like something really interesting. But you, you, your whole schedule mm -hmm. of films is extraordinary, and, and how you coordinate all these things well, each year j just blows my mind. Well, we every have a very hardworking staff. Every uh, year you get better. Well, that's <laughs> wow. Nice of you to say. That's a Thank high you. bar. Yeah. No, I, don't you think you, you really, you, I think don't you think really you have, but don't, what I mean is you, you have a high standard that you reach for and you accomplish it every year. It's, it's quite extraordinary, I think. Yes, and you know, we also encourage people, there are films that will be coming out in the fall, obviously. They're, they're vying for awards, they're in right. the awards race, and so we always want to encourage people to look at the other sections because there are things definitely that won't be shown in the U.S. That would be very interesting for people to see, especially in the world cinema category. That's where the crux of the program is. Mm -hmm. um, it's like 30 or 40 films. Mm -hmm. It depends on the, the year. 30 or 40 films. And there, it's, it's roughly half doc, half documentary, half uh, narrative, but you can't go wrong just walking in to one of these movies because they're all special in right. a very particular way and have been thought over and uh, programmed for a reason. So... Nothing makes us happier than when someone walks up to us when we see us on the street and they walk up and say, I walked into this movie. I had no idea what it was about. And it is, I've not stopped talking about it. To, is there any way my friends can see it? But that kind of information from us filters to distributors for films that don't have distribution right. yet. And so those things matter. And it matters to the filmmakers. And, you know, film festivals are here to give the light of day to filmmakers who, who need some exposure. For the most part, that's what we do. So 
Go see everything. <laughs> That's the whole okay. point. Can't see everything. Oh, I'll see as much as I can. But now yeah. we, you also have these conversations, Winnick Talks, that you do Winnick in the morning. Talks. Yes. Tell, tell us what those are. And well, it's named after a, a man named Gary Winnick, who for most of his career, uh, came out to the Hamptons, was a very huge supporter of the Hamptons Film Festival itself. Um, he grew up in New York City. He's a director. Unfortunately, he passed away way too young, about five, six years ago, five or six years, years ago. ago. And so um, we were endowed to do something for young up-and-coming filmmakers, and I thought naming our talk series every morning after him Aww. would be the best way to honor his That's memory. That's very sweet. And so, it really is. Uh, we were very happy that the person who oversees that was excited about that idea, too. So the free talks every morning, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. At what time? 10 a.m., Rowdy Hall. Okay. Yes. And uh, the first talk is, you won't believe this, but it's a year since the hashtag MeToo um, movement started. <sighs> so the first on Friday at 10 a.m. will be about uh, Me Too and some of the filmmakers we have here. They'll be on a panel talking about their films. Saturday, we are talking about breakthrough, breakthrough artists. artists. We have three wonderful breakthrough artists David will tell you about right now. Yeah, uh, continuing, <laughs> our, <laughs> continuing our tradition of, of highlighting uh, Take a upcoming <laughs> actors, uh, not necessary. We've got uh, Kaylee Carter, who's the lead, uh, one of the lead actresses from a film called Private Life by Tamara Jenkins, uh, which also stars Katherine Hahn and Paul Giamatti. So Kaylee Carter will be there. Amanda Stenberg, who's an actress who just had a really big New York Times profile written about her two weeks ago, who is the lead actor in a film called The Hate You Give and Corey Michael Smith, who's the star of a film called 1985 that we have and is also in Damien Chazelle's First Man. So those three breakthrough artists will be here this year. That's yeah. Saturday. Saturday the hate morning. You give. What, what is that? Do you know what the that is? The Hate You Give uh, title comes from Thug, t uh, Hate You Give, uh -huh. and it's which comes from a Tupac Shakur song. Oh, wow. Um, it's based on a, a young adult novel, a very, very successful young adult novel, directed by George Tillman Jr., and it's going to really kick off our Southampton screenings on Friday, October 5th. It's a really moving film. Amanda Stenberg, who's a young African-American actress, plays a young high school student who witnesses the shooting of an unarmed black man by a police officer and the controversy that ensues in her community following that incident. Uh, Common is in it. Issa Good. Rae. It's a really, Regina, uh, I forget the other cast, but Regina Hall. Regina it's a really Hall. great uh, cast. Well, do you know where, the, where, where, the, where it's set? So, uh, where, I can't remember is where it? it's set. I want to say outside of Atlanta, but I, I can't remember where the film is mm -hmm. set, mm -hmm. but it's great. You're probably close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, so those are our three breakthrough artists this year, and that's Saturday morning. And then Sunday morning, we're having a panel on virtual reality, oh. which is the new buzzy thing in the film world. You know, how are we going to take this new technology and incorporate it into movie experiences? You can all, right now, you can experience it if you play video games, more so than, than any other space. Right. But, um, we are also going to have an immersive virtual reality experience right here in East Where? Hampton at Mulford Farm. Wow. Yeah, we're home sweet home. <laughs> we're home sweet home. And, the and is that going to be going on all the time? Friday through Monday from 12 to 4. And you put the headset on. You're not tethered to anything. And there's a film called The Hidden that you are going to plop down right in the middle of a situation where a woman, a young woman, is outside hanging her wash. It seems to be in L.A., and um, ICE agents come up and start to ask her questions, and it's an eight-minute experience of what happens ultimately in that whole interaction, and you're right there with them. Wow. It's really incredible. It's really quite incredible. And um, so You don't have to make a reservation, you just show up and... You show up and sign up, uh -huh. right. Oh, so right. you have There's, to you have to wait a little bit. We have several headsets, but it's an eight-minute right. piece, but... Um, we're really excited. We're partnering with uh, Minerva Perez and Ola to, uh, to bring some people out to really experience that, as well as uh, our conflict and resolution section has an amazing movie. Called The, the Silence Sil of Others, which we're also partnering with Ola on, which is the Latin American organization out here in the Hamptons. And it's a film called The Silence of Others, which is about uh, a group of people that look back on the atrocities committed during the Franco regime and a group of people that are working to have the people that committed them um, held accountable for what they did, and how similar laws and uh, searching for accountability is being held up in other communities in which these kind of things happened. It's called the science. So all of topical. Yeah. Wow. All topical <laughs> things. Uh, 
if I can talk about one more movie because it's yeah, we have two, about two minutes. So also we'll topical. Two things. Watergate. We have a four-hour documentary on Watergate playing okay, have on the parallels. Friday. <laughs> on Friday at eleven thirty in the morning at Guildhall. There's an intermission, but it is utterly fascinating to see all that happened in one full swoop at that time. To know how incredibly similar the situation we're in now is, and how dire it got back then, where we haven't even reached at this I point. Know. So I would encourage everyone to go. It's a regular. Price ticket, right? It's not so, even yeah. a spotlight film. It's a fifteen dollar ticket. I, I I, so. I'm curious. Did everybody know where we were going in Watergate? No. Because now with the, we seem to have some clue, don't we? Mm, well, wow. who knows? I mean, yeah. who knows? But we are. I mean, we, we don't we don't have the facts, but it seems we will like see. There's too much yes. protesting. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need a little more tape. Yeah. But anyhow, <laughs> um, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. It wasn't virtual reality. We talked about virtual reality. And, uh, and then you said. Oh, you the know. rush line. We want to remind people there's a rush oh, line. Oh, yeah. Yes, can this get is so the... important. Sure. Yeah. Uh, for those who are not used to sort of going to festivals, basically, we sell some tickets in advance to people f uh, online or in the box office, but we also hold a lot of seats at the theater the day of. And so. Due to passes. Yeah. So some people. People wear passes right. who exactly. don't need a ticket. So if we hold 100 seats for pass holders and only 60 pass holders show up, right. 15 minutes before the screening, we sell those 40 seats. So you have 40 seats. So it's very easy, even if you don't have advanced tickets, to ultimately go to the theater that's playing the film you want and get in on the rush line. It's called the rush line. So you just go get on the rush line. Get on yep. the rush you line. You don't have to have a ticket and you buy your ticket there. You buy your ticket that's there. Right. As you, so if you're one of the lucky 40 ones, yep. 40 that's going to get in, you go and you buy your ticket. That's, so that's right. right. If, if don't, you can't miss anything. You nope. Show up at the rush line if you want to <laughs> yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the beauty of a film festival, too, that I do want to say last, is that you can experience a film festival for free in many instances, all the way up to buying an all-access pass. Film festivals are for everyone. It's not just for the few. And, we, and we're in every, we're the only event that happens in every village on the same exact weekend. Can you believe that? It, it's the Hampton International Film Festival, October 4th through the 8th. So get your tickets.